Most journals are made up of women. Do you know that? That means if you take on a number, on a scale, the, the average or the majority is made up of women and the minority is of men. But friends, when the Bible was written, it was written in a more of a male dominant uh, culture. So you will see lots of men names mentioned and the great things they did. But today, in the Bible, there are amazing women that come through. Hallelujah. Friends, but today we are going to look at a lady called Abigail. Everyone say Abigail. That's not enough. You know what you have to do when you come to church? You must practice your vocal cords. Abigail. How many of you know of Abigail? Have you ever heard of Abigail? Maybe some of you have heard about her. Maybe some of you have a rough idea about her. Maybe some of you have children named after Abigail. Is there anyone named after Abigail here? No. Hallelujah. Maybe when God blesses you with children, maybe you can name your daughter Abigail. Hallelujah. Because you're going to see it's an amazing name in the Bible. Hallelujah. Alright. Now friends, before we look at this lady, we have to consider her husband because she was married. When you are in a marriage relationship, husband and wife go together. Sometimes the husband travels far before the wife and the wife is behind. So he feels like you have to drag. Sometimes the wife has so much of life, she wants to do so many things, but the husband is right behind. So the wife feels he has, she has to drag him. Now this we are going to learn of a lesson about a lady. But before we learn about her, Today, you are going to pray with me. Say these words. Close your eyes and say these words. Dear Lord Jesus, speak to me from your word. Dear Lord Jesus, let me hear your holy word. Change me, fill me, and anoint me according to your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Friends, we don't change the Bible. The Bible changes us. Hallelujah. That is the truth. Now, friends, uh, 1 Samuel 25, verses 2 and 3, shall we read according to the word of the Lord that is here in this place. Amen. Uh, read with me. There are a few hard words. Uh, so, I'm going to ask you also to read with me and uh, take a short and a few words. Come. A certain man in... Mahon, who had property there at Carmel, was very wealthy. He had a thousand goats and three thousand sheep with him. He was shearing in Carmel. Verse 3. His name was Nabal and his wife's name was Abigail. She was an intelligent and beautiful woman. But her husband, a Calebite, was, what's the pronunciation? Surly, no, I think that's how I do God is surly and mean and mean in his dealings. Very quickly, friends, in these two things we have to see about the husband. We need to get the picture of the husband before we go to the wife. First thing is he is wealthy. Everyone say wealthy. Is wealthy is it good to be wealthy? Is it good to be wealthy? Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. I hope any of you don't have a, a ambition to be a, the most poorest person in Sri Lanka. If you are having that, it's not God's wish for you. God's wish is so that you be wealthy, not that you take your wealth and use it on yourself, but that you bless others. That is the power, purpose of God. Second thing is, he was a very arrogant man. That's what it means. That like a surly or something, how we pronounce it. The meaning of it, he was an insulting, he was an arrogant man. Write this down. This is important. We have to look about the husband. Third thing, he came from a good family. Everyone say good family. Now friends, you know when you sometimes want to give your daughter or son in marriage, sometimes people do look at the family background. Am I right? Huh? They say, oh, they are parents, they are grandparents, they are super people who are a good family. I must say that. You look at them. Otherwise, ah, boy, I know. Be careful. I'm telling you, if you get into that, you're finished. Now, there are things like that that is happening. Now, he came from a good family. He had wealth, but he was arrogant, he was insulted. He was also from a good family. Now, verse 10 and 11. Please display that. Church, it's good. Okay, you're reading the Bible. Each time you read, 
something good is happening in your spirit. Ten and eleven. Read with me. Nabal answered David's servant, Who is David? Who is this son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters this day. Verse 11. Why should I take my bread and water and the meat I have slaughtered for my shears and give it to men coming from who knows where? Now friends, can you put the pause button here? Because otherwise you'll miss the whole story. Pause. Okay? Pause. Now you'll pause the story. We are talking, what's the husband's name? Nabal or Nabal, whatever way you like to pronounce it. The meaning of his name is fool. Write that down. That's also very important. Okay? That's the actual meaning about his name, fool. Now, in those days when people had their will, they measured it with goats, with sheep, with whatever, with camels, whatever they had around them. And the enemy would always come and steal from their sheep and goats. But David and his men were on the run, 600 of them. David was anointed to be king, but David couldn't be king because Saul was blocking him. Sometimes we have the anointing, we have God's blessing. God has already answered our prayers, but still we can't have the victory because there is a Saul somewhere blocking our blessing. It was same with David. He was anointed, but he couldn't be our king because Saul was blocking him. So while he made it out, David and his men protected Nabal's well. So now at the time of shearing, David sent two men and said, Can you give us also some of the blessing, what you got? We looked after your sheep, it's like a tip. Everyone said tip. So it's not asking a handout, it's like a small tip. He said, Can you please also share with us because we took care of your sheep. What does Nabal say? I told you he's an arrogant man. The first thing he says, Who is David? Who is David? Friends, write this thing, the fourth thing down. It's very important. I want you to get it in your spirit. Even in your Bible, mark it somewhere. Nabal did not recognize or give the proper place to the anointing. So it's very, he took the anointing lightly. Friends, 2013 is a year of the anointing. Look to Jesus and walk straight. I was reading an amazing story about this father who put the child to plough in the field. Of course, long time ago. And the son had to plough the field straight. So the father had to get him some kind of understanding. So the father told him, son, you sit near the plough and now you can go forward. The way you do it is, can you see that cow sitting there? The son says, yes, dad, I can see the cow sitting there. He says, okay, son, look at that cow and go straight. You will go to the other side, a straight line. After about two, three and a half hours, the father comes expecting to see the plow taken straight and he was ready to sow the seed. Suddenly his jaws all drop, his eyes pop when he sees the son has taken the plow all over the field and gone. He was very upset with the son. He said, what is wrong with you? I told you to go straight. No. He said, Dada, I went straight. But that cow got up and kept on walking to Dada here and there. So I followed him. Now friends, for those who follow a person rather than Jesus will be in the same way. Their lives will be all over. Please, I am telling you today, open your eyes and look at Jesus. Amen? Keep the word of God at the main point of your life. You will not go left or right. Anyone who went on a straight road never got lost. Hallelujah! Anyone never got lost. Jesus will lead you. So friends, he did now, this is still not my main point even. Amen. Number five. He lived for himself. Write it down. I, me, myself. Friends, his life was all about him. I want my money. I want this. I want this. Everything was about him. So he lived for himself. And friends, verse 17, we are not going to read it because of time. I, I want to spend some time with Abigail. Verse 17, it says, one of the servants goes and reports this to Abigail and the servant uses a word, no one can speak to my master. Write it down. Nabal was a foolish man because no one would have spoken to him. There are sometimes friends I want to tell you. Certain people, you can't talk with them about anything. You talk with them about anything, they know all. You tell them something, they know it. They are in an argument, they anyway want to get the last word in. And anyway have the victory there. They, they tell, I am right. They sometimes say, if I am wrong, tell me, but in my heart I am right. So always they are fighting to have prominence. 
Naaman was a man like this. No one could have told him anything. I am asking you, late church, humble yourself. Maybe a small child can teach you something. Hallelujah. Maybe the most unexpected situation can teach you something if you are listening. If you are a hard-hearted person and you say, no, I am the only right person, there is nothing else. Your managers will fail. Your life will not go forward. You will be a very miserable person because you have to fight to be at number one. Okay? Verse 3. Let's go to verse 3 once again. Read with me. Two things about Abigail. Mark it, okay? It's amazing. Write these things down, friends. When you compare these characters, you will learn so much from the word of God. Verse 3. <coughs> Right, right. His name was Nabal and his wife's name was Abigail. Read church, what was it? She was an intelligent and beautiful woman. Write those two down. It was a winning combination. She was not only intelligent, she was also beautiful. Some people say, they are very beautiful and so foolish. I wish that beauty was in the brain. Sometimes people say, but thank God, you know, God has really blessed them with good brains because otherwise when you look at them, there is nothing else. Now friends, sometimes people are blessed with good features, sometimes people are not, sometimes people are intelligent, sometimes people are, people are foolish. But listen, Abigail had both. She was a beautiful woman, she was also an intelligent woman. Now friends, I want to tell you this. Being beautiful, getting handsome, staying fit, Doing all of this is not wrong. But if our inner being is useless, you may have the best physique, you may be the most beautiful one to look at, but that makes no meaning because your inner being has nothing there. Okay? So be a person of content. Be a person who has something to offer. So she was beautiful, she was intelligent. Tell me the two things quickly. She was beautiful, she was intelligent. So it's a good winning combination. Verse 18, read with me, friends, we are reading. Abigail, write the meaning of her name down. Father's joy or fountain of joy. It's important. So if you are hoping to name your children someday, Father's joy or fountain of joy. You know, some children bring joy to their parents. Other times, parents wonder, how did I ever bring this child up? Why did this child ever do these things? Sometimes parents do say those. Now, friends, verse 18. Let's go. Let's go ahead. Abigail lost no time. She took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine. Ah, see, all over in the Bible, wine. Five dressed sheep. Five uh, of roasted grain. And a hundred cakes of raisins. And two hundred cakes of press figs. And loaded them on donkeys. Friends, quickly write it down. It's very important. Abigail acted fast. Many people, we lose lots of things because we don't act when it's necessary. When the two people went back and told David that Nabal refused to give anything and Nabal demeaned him, you know what David did? How many people did David have? I said it if you just pick how many people was there? 600. He left 200 with the stuff. 400 people with his sword. It says you read the Bible. He also took his sword. He said, By tomorrow morning, I will kill everyone. Now look at David. I will kill everyone in the house of Nabal. I will kill every one of them for what he has done. And David is an angry man. He's a man now bent on vengeance and revenge. 400 people. And you know he was a warrior. He will never step back. He will never take a foot back. He also is with his sword. They are coming friends to slaughter Nabal and all of them. It's a dangerous situation. Abigail acted fast. Friends, I'm telling you, she acted immediately. Third important thing is, she acted immediately. She took the opportunity. Friends, in English we have a saying, Opportunity doesn't knock twice. Have you, have you, have you, have you said those say? Oh, opportunity comes disguised. Listen, this is very important. In work, when you accept your responsibilities, God opens opportunities. Opportunities come disguised as impossible situations. Opportunities come disguised as problems. People who see the opportunity and seize it 
and take it forward, they will be blessed rather than missing. Sometimes in life, because we have not acted, we have missed good things. Say that with me. We have missed good things. I must act fast. Amen? Friends, when you are in a problem, you know what is the first thing to do? What is the first thing? Fire a prayer. Hallelujah. If you are in a great spirit, one shot prayer. Amen? In Jesus' name. Lord, I do not know, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. I need some condition. But Lord, please save me. Fire a prayer. And God will hear you at your place. Amen. Friends, she acted quickly. The next thing is four. Write it about her. Four things. Abigail didn't come empty-handed. This is very important. God has placed gifts in you. God has given you something. Use it for Him. Hallelujah. She didn't come empty-handed. She bought something with her. And her gift opened the door. Friends, sometimes people say, I don't have anything to give God. You know the Bible says, don't come empty handed. And now, don't think I'm a hard person. You know I'm not a hard person. Uh, you know how we feel about you, how we, we are committed to see you grow. But when I hear that if anyone didn't have anything to give, that troubles me. You know why? Because throughout the week, you have not considered God at all. If you say you don't have 10 rupees even to give God, there is a problem there. I don't know if you agree with me. But just think of what I'm telling you. If you don't have, you know why? If you have to even forego one trip, if you have to walk even, if you save that up, you have something to give him. Don't say, I don't have. Don't say, I'm empty handed. Say, in Jesus' name, these hands are going to receive the finances. Hallelujah. Sometimes when we, we pray very strong prayers, okay, Hallelujah, in Jesus' name, I'm going to be blessed. After we are blessed, Go and spend it and waste it. Waste it. And then, God. Like God is to be blamed. I don't have to love this man. Why? Because God has blessed you, but you have not used it in a proper way. She packed up everything and bought all to David. Now, friends, <clears throat> very important. Verse 23. Are you here? Hallelujah. Amen. Five people are here. Praise God. Let's read it. When Abigail saw David, now very important, read church with me. She quickly got off her donkey and bowed down before David with her face to the ground. Friends, write this down, write it in your heart. Abigail respected the anointing. Abigail respected the anointing. Neighbor said, who is David? Soon as Abigail saw David coming, she got off her donkey and she bowed before him because she knew there was an anointing that he carried. Friends, don't be people who rebel against the anointing. Be people who go, who respect, who pray for the anointing. Amen. See, what a different woman. The husband said, but she quickly got off. She was not there. She would have been in the kitchen when this man came. A servant went to and told her, Abigail, go and do something. Our master chased them away. She quickly got on. She didn't lose time. She went and now see, she respected the anointing. Friends, verse 30, very important. We are going to read this and now I'm going to touch some very important things. Okay? Come. After verse 30. And you're wondering, what have we been doing so long? We were not touching important things. We're touching important things, but we're going to hit a bit very close to home. 30, right, come. When the Lord had done for my master every good thing, he promised concerning him and, his, and he appointed him leader over Israel. Write this down. Abigail was a spiritual woman. She prophesied over David that David will someday become king of Israel. Friends, ladies, as you are here, God is calling you to be a spiritual person. Hallelujah. Abigail was not only intelligent, she was not only beautiful, but she was a spiritual woman. She spoke the word of God. Hallelujah. And she prophesied over David. Now, why was David coming? Quickly tell me, friends, why was David coming? To kill everyone. Suddenly David is met by Abigail and she stops him on the way. This is what Jesus did for us. Hallelujah. If Jesus didn't come to this world, we would have all been going to hell. But Jesus came and saved us from our sin. Hallelujah. He stopped us. 
there. That's what he did. Abigail stopped the slaughter then and there. And you know what she did? She said, forgive my husband. He's a fool. And now, I'm going to ask you a thing. This is very, now I'm going to hit very close for home. Okay? So get ready. <clears throat> Say, I am ready. That you are not ready. I am ready. Oh, if you are ready, now you are going to hear these important things. Abigail said, forgive my husband. And she pleaded for her entire household and she saved them. Earlier days, when people got married, marriages were arranged. That means the girl didn't have anything to do with the future partner. Father and mother decides, you marry so and so. Because if you marry so and so, we'll get 100, 100 cows. I will get 1000 goats. You better marry them. So they had no choice. So they had to get, especially if you were a girl. Friends, most probably, according to the Bible history background, Abigail also was in an arranged marriage. She got a bad deal in life. Everyone say a bad deal. She got a bad deal because she got a fool for a husband. And she got an arrogant man for a husband. She got a bad deal. But friends, when she bowed before David, it would have been her best opportunity. David. I couldn't do this. Can you please go and kill my husband? That useless rotter. I will wait for someone. She didn't say that. You know, friends, she stood there, even in her difficult marriage, in her difficult situation, she did not give up. She held on and she wanted salvation to come to her family. Today, husbands, wives, don't give up on your marriages. Don't say, this is not working. Don't say that. Listen to this, I'm going to read some interesting things. In the US, after one year of divorce, 60% of men and 73% of women say they had made the wrong choice and they wish they had put a little more effort into their marriage. These are the number, the top number excuses for divorce because people have to give some sort of a reason. Here are the Top number. The grass is greener on the other side. That means what? My husband doesn't care about me like this person. Really loves me. The one, husband said, my wife, she doesn't know if I exit, but see this lady cooks for me all the best food that comes. She really cares for me. Grass is greener on the other side. But when you get there, the grass is the same color. Believe me. It may look really green. When you get there, it's same color. Number two. The kids will be better off if they are divorced. Number three. Because I am not in love anymore. Famous. And there are hundreds of songs. No, hundreds, hundreds of songs. Especially the country and western. If you listen like me, the old old songs. Are hundreds, huh? Her lips are, I forgot, her lips are, your lips are cold or something like that. I can't now remember. But that we now finish. There is no more, no more fire, nothing, 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 no to go. The relationship has gone cold. Because I am not in love anymore. Then the next reason, number four. This will make me happy. You know, it's a very strange thing. Sometimes people think, if I get rid of my husband or wife, I'll be really happy. Really, yeah, this is the top list I'm telling you. That, of course, this is in the US. I don't know whether it's in Sri Lanka like this, but quite possible. Now, 13 years of ministry, I, we have seen many of these things. Number five. Oh. I do not know if this is more for ladies thing. I will finally get my freedom. <laughs> you know, some love that. I will get my freedom. My this husband never gives me any freedom. That is not a reason for divorce. Some people run for freedom. And after that they get into prisons. That I am telling you even. I don't know, no one can take you out. Husband's wives. Make your marriage work. And finally, there are very spiritual divorce partners. It's the will of God. God told me it's the will of God. 
God really? I'm really? It's really? It's the will of God. Friends, it's not the will of God. Now, why I tell you all of this? I would be wrong if I don't tell you this. Some people have actually got a bad deal in life. Some people have actually got a situation where it is beyond. I am asking you is, if you are here, and for the smallest thing, if you are trying to give up on your life, on your marriage, don't do that. What I am asking you is, put a little more effort. Forgive a little more. Be a little more behind. Alright. Friends, I have been preaching for a long time, but you have been listening. I tell this final point and I will finish it off. If you remember what I told you. Amen. Finally, Abigail goes back. And you know what David does? The angry man immediately drops his anger then and there. He turns back and he goes. One word of this woman, this amazing character, Abigail, who meets David and stops him from bloodshed. He goes back, she goes back. Now the story is uh, one more part. When she goes home, now I'm going to read you go home and read this. Today, do yourself a favor, read this whole story. When she goes home, Nabal is having a big party. Everyone say party. <laughs> ah, he's having a big party. And he's full. Put to fall. That's the real thing. Okay, you won't get put to fall in the Bible, but he's full. Eh? And you know what? Abigail does. Abigail does quite a lot. You fool. You, you almost killed us. Close your mouth. You know what Abigail does? She doesn't go and tell him anything. She sees he's drunk. Huh? A wise woman. She ignores him. In the morning, the drunken fits go so far. Then she called him. And she told, you know, yesterday what you did, you almost brought disaster upon us. They are the next beautiful thing of Abigail is patience. Abigail acted fast, but she also had patience. Many people's relationships break is when you have to have patience, you act fast. When you have to act fast, you have patience. And you just wait. No friends, have patience. Sometimes, when you are in an argument, if the house is ready, please, can you just for one minute be quiet? Husbands, don't say anything. Wife, just one minute. Quiet me down. You will be happy for 100 hours. Hallelujah. If you can control that one or two minutes of terrible anger that comes upon you. Are you getting my word? If she went and spoke to him, I even talk, what he would say? Thank God for that. I know. And you know when people think they become a lion from, I would have to take me thinking. That's how he went over there. I know what to do. Because you know, they don't have to Real God. When the singer, you know, very best summer, very Hindu mama, now he got up in the morning. Abigail said, Do you know what happened? We almost died. The Bible says, friends, his heart became cold. When he heard this, his heart became cold. And in 10 days, he died. This is the Anya Bible. He died in 10 days. The Bible says the Lord struck him. Many people believe it was a heart attack that he got. Okay, he was a wealthy man. He was not all that old when you come there. Their lifestyles. Okay, he was not an old man. But the Lord struck him. And friends, the story ends like this. I know it's a bit of a strange ending. But go home and read. The end of the story is after the husband is dead, the wife who saved him. David, of course those days kings had the opportunity today. Maybe you don't get that sort of opportunity. David had that opportunity where he invited his own Abigail come and be my wife. And the end of the, end of the story was Abigail marries David. That's the end of the story. What friends? And she becomes, she bears him also a child. And the Bible says he took another wife. Then anyway, David had about almost about 18 or 19 uh, wives altogether. But just we'll keep that part aside. The thing was, she saved the day. She saved the entire generation from slaughter because of her quick acts. So today, friends, with this, I want to end. Mark 13, 11. 
Let's read this. And when you get up in the morning, would you please remember this prayer and say, Holy Spirit, guide my mouth, guide my life, and the Holy Spirit will do it. If you do this, you will not fall into any trouble. Listen, whenever you are arrested or brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given to you at the time. For it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. When you give the Holy Spirit control of your mouth, of your life, don't worry. He will speak through you. Hallelujah. Come church. Come with a heart of thanksgiving and give to the Lord. Let's continue to sing that song once more. Hallelujah. Here I am waiting. Amen. Sing to the Lord after you have given him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Go and live a powerful week. Come on, Wednesday for the prayer at 5.30. 